Hey guys, so I know a lot of y'all have been asking about deep structure fishing. How do you do it? What to look for? What do fish look like on your electronics? We're going to look at that today. The most important thing is when you're using your electronics when the fish get offshore is to really know what the fish look like on your graph. Now everybody's graphs are different. Everybody uses you know, different models and different brands and things like that. But if you know what fish look like on your electronics, it's gonna really help you out a lot. So spend a lot of time idling around, studying, and if you can throw out there with like a Carolina rig or something like that, get a feel for what's on the bottom. And if you get bites, then you know, oh, okay, that's bass. So what I'm about to show you is basically an underwater point, and I'm gonna show you what fish look like on this point. Basically what we're looking at here is a split screen and I've got a map on one side that has my contour lines and then I have my actual sonar on this side that's going to help me read the fish and the structure that's down below. So I'm just going to follow my contour lines and look at this spot. This is basically an underwater point that comes out to the main lake and it has really deep water close by and it's just kind of a feeding area for these fish. So see if we can see anything. Now that is a tree. We don't want to get excited about that. And if we actually look at our, our down scan, you can see the, the, the tree right there. So that's not a fish. That's not what we're looking for. There's a couple more trees. I can see a few bass hanging on the base of these trees here. All right, I see one fish on the bottom there, hanging close to the bottom. In about 26 feet of water there. So this is really what you want to look for right here. This is a stack of fish that are sitting in about 26 feet of water and they are very grouped up, very stacked. You can see the individual arcs in there. Here's a few on the end and if we actually look at our, our down uh, sonar, the actual image, you can see the fish sitting grouped up together. So one of the most important tools you can use when you're offshore structure fishing is the marker buoy. You want to make sure you've got a marker buoy ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to idle back around, I'm going to mark the fish, I'm going to cast out there and see if we can catch it. First cast out there, I didn't even have my mic turned on, I just turned it on. But uh, first cast dragging the Carolina rig, I just hooked one. It's not a very big one, but uh, it's one of those fish we saw down there. Oh, we slung my bait. Oh well, we'll get another one. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can get another one. What I had to do is I had to get on the, uh, the motor and I had to refine the fish. They kind of moved away. I had, my GoPro died and I had to uh, tie up that Carolina rig. So I kind of kind of missed the beat a little bit on getting out there and, and casting those fish really quick. And uh, they moved on me a little bit. So I moved out, I found them again and this is my first cast after I threw out my buoy. So Let's see if we can get one here. There's one right there. Oh, I missed him. No dice, I think I missed my mark right there. Oh, I did get a bite. Yeah, it bit me right in half. Right behind the hook. Got a missed fish. Fish bit my lure in half. I deserve one right here. Get up in here, golly, look at that football. Wow, that is a fish that has been eating, boys and girls. 
that fish is probably two and three quarter pounds and it's probably 15 inches long. It's a nice one. So there's lots of places you can fish offshore. Humps, points, road beds. There's a lot of stuff in the water. If you study a map, and if we look at a map right now and kind of analyze some things to look for, basically what I'm fishing here is a, is a point, but it's underwater. You can't see it sticking out of the water like a point that's, that's on land, but it's underwater and it comes out and where it meets that deep water is where these fish are. And a lot of times in the summer, you'll get something that's called a thermocline. And when that thermocline develops, it makes a layer that basically the fish cannot live in. They can't live below that thermocline. It, plankton that are down there, when they die, they fall to the bottom and then the bacteria eat on the plankton. And uh, when the bacteria eat, they use up oxygen. It creates a, basically, a zone where the oxygen is non-existent. And if you study your electronics, you can kind of see where the fish are gonna hang out. Um, if you go off into deep water, you're not seeing fish going below that, say, 35 foot mark. You know that thermocline's probably around that 35 foot. And um, if you can find some structure out there uh, or some, some good humps, things like that, that come up and meet that thermocline, it can really be a good spot to fish. All right, I got another bait in my hand right here we're going to look at. And this is a flutter spoon. And the flutter spoon is basically just a big hunk of metal that looks like a dying shad when it falls down. The curvature of the blade, or not the blade, but the metal, is designed to where when you throw it out there and it's, when it's sinking, it looks like a shad that's dying and it flutters. And the key to fishing this is letting this thing fall on slack line. So when it falls on that slack line, you're going to get that nice flutter. Oh, one just absolutely knocked the fire out of it. I went back over the group again, and I saw them. I mean, they're stacked right there. And uh, a lot of times when they're stacked on a, on a drop like that, this flutter spoon can be really, really deadly. That fish absolutely hammered it. I can't believe I missed him. I'm just lifting up my rod tip and probably three or four feet off the bottom and then letting it fall back again. This flutter spoon is in in my deep fishing arsenal pretty much all the time. I, I usually have a flutter spoon tied on, a regular jigging spoon, uh, a Carolina rig, a football jig, and a big Texas rig worm. And those things right there are really uh, the baits I, I try to stick to. Uh, I throw a swim bait sometimes and drop shot and stuff like that. But there's one right there. Oh, I missed him. There he came back and got it. No, I missed him again. Oh, came back and got it a third time. Oh, he came off. Came off. I mean, hit it three times. There he is again. Goodness gracious. That was awesome. <laughs> That's how much they like that flutter spoon. He just kept coming and coming and coming after it. That was cool. Check that out. <laughs> that fish came after it four times and finally got it. And I hooked him in the nose. But man, he absolutely just came after it with a vengeance. I, he actually had some fall on him. I could see him on the graph. I'm just gonna show you guys real quick. Check this out. Got some more followers coming up as I brought him in. That's pretty cool. Flutter, flutter, flutter down. Flutter, flutter, flutter down. Oh yeah, there she is. Gooden. Gooden, here she comes. Come on and jump for me. Nope, not gonna do it. Gonna go back down. Woohoo! Yes, sir! That's a good one. There's a four pounder. Chunker, man. Chunker, chunker, chunker. I'm telling you, this flutter spoon, deep structure fishing, 
is fun, fun, fun. That's a, just a solid fish, but what a fight and what a hit. Gotta love it, baby, gotta love it. Oh, got some freckles on it. A little beauty mark. Gonna be a big one. We haven't caught a real big one yet. Maybe this flutter spoon will take care of that. But you can see the average size fish out here is pretty good. You know, in this deeper water, you're looking at about three pounds. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we caught a, a five or six pounder here in a minute. But when you're fishing this spoon too, it's really important to watch your line because you're, you're letting it fall on that slack line and that's when they're gonna hit it. They're gonna hit it 95% of the time on the fall. So you really ne need to watch your line and if it flinches, reel down and see if you've got a fish on there. Because it's so erratic, you can miss a lot of fish on this spoon. So I tend to try, I try to reel down before I set the hook and see if they're there. But it is so hard to do when they are just crushing it. Out here in about 25 feet of water. Really a lot of places that I fish, that seems to be a pretty good starting point for looking for these deeper fish. 20 to 25 feet. Um, is, is a really good place to start looking. But really, if you see bait fish out there consistently in a certain depth, you may not even have to find fish on the electronics. If you're looking at some, uh, some structure and there's bait fish around it, try fishing it. There was another one. Wasn't that good of a bite. It wasn't a slammer. He just slapped at it. No, oh, I missed him. Missed him. There he is, got it. Good one. Good one. He's coming up and jump. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about on this spoon. You can really catch some good ones. Wow, this thing's pulling hard. This is so fun to do. It's just a really great bite. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This is a good one. Don't throw it, don't throw it. It's barely hooked. He's hooked on the, the outside of the mouth, just on the corner. It's a good fish though. It's a real good fish. Oh, come here. All right, yeah. There we go. There's that six pounder we were looking for. Just got him right in the corner of the mouth there. Look at that. Man. You want to talk about fun, fun, fun. Catching them on this flutter spoon is awesome. And the scary thing is, there's more down there. Beautiful fish. Fun way to catch them. Let's let her go. Look how thick that fish is. My gosh. Awesome. See you later, baby. Woo! God, that's fun. If you don't get excited about fishing like that on this deep stuff, there's something wrong with you. It can be really rewarding if you find them. You can also waste a lot of time not catching anything, idle around for hours, but when you find them, they're usually grouped up pretty good and you can have a really, really fun time. All right, new tactic, new tactic. Backlash. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a backlash. I'm going to let it sink all the way to the bottom. By the time I'm get done picking this thing out, there ought to be a big one on there. Anyway, football jig. Haven't tried it yet. Another good way to catch them deep. So we're going to see if we can get a bit on it here. That flutter spoon is so hard to put down. And the Carolina rig is really my confidence bait. It's one of the first things I throw out there normally. But football jig, you can get a little bit better size than that Carolina rig. It's just a different kind of presentation. It's more of a crawfish looking deal. It's got a big profile, so big fish can pick it up and hopefully just chomp it on down. That might be a fish right there. Nope, it was not. False alarm. Maybe we can get it. Oh, there's one right there. 
Oh, he didn't hit but no take. Huh. There it is again. Got him that time. Feels small. Not a bad one, not a bad one. Another one on a different bait. It's a different bait. Get up in here. All right. Whew, man. Football jig. It's about a three pounder, a lean one, but we'll take him. And that's just a different bait. A lot of times throwing different baits on the same school of fish is a good thing because if you throw the same thing out there a lot they'll get used to it and then it'll kind of shut them down for a little bit so if you pick something up that's different and fired it back fire it back out there it might just keep the school feeding same thing with with colors you know if you're throwing a, a deep diving crankbait which i i don't really like to throw a lot i know that's that's a really good way to catch them i just i just like to catch them other ways but changing up your colors with the crankbaits or Whatever you're throwing, a jig, Carolina rig, switching your colors up, that's another good way to keep the school, the school going, keep them feeding. And if all else fails, you can just stick your head underwater and yell at them. But that doesn't work for me too much. There he is. He went and did it. He went and hit that jig. Oh, that's a head shaker. Oh, that's just a... Wow. There's nothing like this deep structure fishing. Just smacking them on one spot. Bam! He's got a little growth situation happening on him, but, you know, they can't all be pretty. He's got some kind of kind of virus going on, but you know, sometimes the ones with the viruses need to eat too. Really seems like this football jig. It's just a little bit more subtle and it's just picking them off. Get down there and crawl me one up there, jig. Don't make me break the spoon out on you. I'll do it. There's a tree. Didn't want to be in the tree. I want the tree pounder. There it goes. Just have to give, give it the old smack down. Oh boy, he took off with it. Oh, right when I got in that danger zone where that tree was. Feels like a decent one. Oh yeah, it's a pretty good one. Not a bad one. Get up in here, baby. Oh, a long one. A long one, but we will take a long one. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It has a hook sticking out of its butt. That hook just came out of its I cannot be comfortable. There's about a four and three quarters, five pounder. Well, I'm sure he's appreciative of me taking that out of his butt. Guys, if you like this kind of fishing, if you want to learn more, if you've learned anything in this video and, and want to learn more specific things, let me know. Leave a comment, hit, hit the like button, and I'll share some more stuff with you because we don't have that much time and we're only scratching the surface. All right, I'm gonna go catch a hog. Till next time, keep your lines tight and I'll see you. Flutter down to the bottom, that's what I like to do. Flutter down to the bottom, big ones like it too. Flutter down, it's way down there, dropping off into the abyss. 
Give me a bite and give me a road, and I swear that I won't miss. <laughs>